بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى صحابته ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين والعاقبة للمتقين اللهم اجعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين آمين آمين ثم آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار ربنا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم افتح لنا فتوح العارفين بك يا فتاح يا عليم وصلي اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وفي الآخرين وفي كل وقت وحيد أبدا الآبدين يا أرحم الراحمين وسلم تسليما كثيرا ورمضان مبارك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته If you were to ask Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what is your favorite month of the year? What do you think he would say? What is the dearest month to your heart out of all the 12 months of the year? What, would, what do you think he would say? Now, do we have any difference of opinion? This is the first time in the history of the Ummah that there is ijma on any answer and you've never read it in a book. It's a total hypothetical question and we are all in agreement, let us rejoice. In the, in the first time that we have actually been able to agree on one thing without any difference of opinion, he would have said, Ramadan, right? Ramadan. Listen very closely. The Prophet وسلم, is once reported to have said, Rajabun Shahrullah. Rajab is the month of Allah. Wushadan. Shahr. And Shaban is my month. Wa Ramadan, Shahr al Ummah. And Ramadan is the month of the entire Ummah. Did you, did you all just catch that? What just happened there? What just happened? What just happened? Rasulullah sallallahu gave to his Ummah his favorite month of the entire year. The month that was dearest to his heart in the entire year, he gifted to you and me. He gave it to us. You would have expected him to say that Ramadan is my month. It's the dearest thing to his heart. But the sign of true love is that the lover sacrifices everything for the beloved. And rejoice for you are the beloved of the beloved of the beloved. You were the beloved of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You were the beloved of the beloved of the beloved, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are his beloved. And because you are his beloved, he sacrifices and gives you everything and asks for nothing in return. Such is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who gives to his ummah the greatest thing that he can possibly give in terms of time, the greatest gift of time is Ramadan. He gives it to us. He hands it over to us. And this is the dearest of the months to the Prophet ﷺ because in it is hosted Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr is part of the month of Ramadan. And Laylatul Qadr is the anniversary of the first encounter between Allah's Messenger and the beloved of Allah's Messenger, his teacher, Jibreel Laylatul Qadr is that anniversary, that annual commemoration and celebration of the Prophet's first encounter with Jibreel So Ramadan was personal for him. It was personal. Ramadan was heartfelt for the Prophet such that throughout the entire year before Ramadan, he would say, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Just allow us to let, just extend my life long enough to where I can be in Ramadan again. The entire year revolved around Ramadan. The entire year was making tawaf around Ramadan. And he hands it to us on a silver platter. Because we are the most beloved to him. After his beloved. After his Lord. His connection was to his Lord and to his Ummah. He came into the world without ever having the ability to say, Abi, my father. And that's because Allah wanted him to say, Rabbi, my Lord. And he entered into the world 
scarcely having the opportunity to say Ummi, my mother, and that's because Allah wanted him to say Ummati, my Ummi. That is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By Allah, the beloved is not mentioned, not even mentioned in the presence of the lover, except that he sacrifices everything, drunk and out of his wits, bewildered at the mere mention of his beloved. Where are those types of lovers who deem the sacrifice of their souls and everything they possess yet insignificant? Where are those types of lovers? And it is true love that we receive from Rasulullah It is true love that he gifts to us his most precious month. He gifts it to us. And so Ramadan is ours. You have a stake in Ramadan. I have a stake in Ramadan. We are all shareholders in Ramadan. And Ramadan pays out dividends in percentages that exceed a thousand. The dividends that are paid exceed a thousand. Whoever said to you that Laylat al Qadr is the equivalent of a thousand months and they compute it to you for they computed to you in solar years, 82 or 83 some odd years, lied to your face. They lied to your face if they told you that Laylat al Qadr was like a thousand months. And they're not paying attention. For what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? What does He say? Laylat al Qadr khayran min al The night of Qadr, the night of the decree, the night of power is better than a thousand months. It's more than a thousand months. It surpasses a thousand months. And a thousand is the greatest number that the Arabs had. Alf. They didn't have a number, but they didn't have million, milliard, <laughs> they didn't have all of that. Right? They had alf. And how do you say a hundred thousand? Is alf or alf. Right? A thousand thousands. That's the greatest number they had. And so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the greatest numbers that the Arabs have and then says it's better than that, and who is saying that? Allah is saying that. Then its, it's reward is immeasurable. Its reward cannot be enumerated. It cannot be enumerated. So how many lifetimes is it? How many lifetimes is it? They say it's an entire lifetime. It's 82 years. It's four generations. No, no, it's far greater than that. And the Prophet ﷺ, for Laylat al Qadr, that was the night that he fell in love with his teacher. After he realized who Jibreel ﷺ was, he yearned for that night. So much so that the last 10 nights of Ramadan, every Ramadan, the last 10 nights, they said that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, can he that he would, that he would that he would uh, roll up his sleeves, right? And he wouldn't visit any of his wives. He was in the masjid the entire time, the daytime and the nighttime. Why? Looking for that night. Looking for that, that night that commemorates. He's celebrating his anniversary with Jibreel alayhi He's celebrating his, his anniversary with Sayyidina Jibreel Just imagine, just imagine the joy that overcomes the Prophet's heart وسلم, every Ramadan where he looks forward to spending quality time with his beloved. He is going to have quality time with his beloved every Ramadan. Especially during the last 10 nights when Jibreel salam, comes to him. And Jibreel salam, is studying the Quran with him, he's teaching him the Quran, he's reciting the Quran to the Prophet وسلم, and the thing, the, the, just imagine what's running through the Prophet's head, could tonight be the night where you first came to me in the cave? Could tonight be that night that commemorates when you first came to me in the cave? And he doesn't ask the question, but he's thinking, he's remembering. 
Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Qadr. And that excitement leads the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Don't be a miser with yourself, say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Whenever you hear his name and whenever you don't hear his name, say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Never forget the Salat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam That is our key, that is our key to ma'iyya to, to, to the companionship that we so desire that we can become companions of the Messenger وسلم, if we just allow ourselves to receive. So that excitement led the Messenger وسلم, to skip iftar all ten of those nights and to make his iftar his suhoor. All ten of those nights, nothing was going to distract him from that night. Nothing was going to distract him from meeting Jibreel Sam. Nothing was going to distract him from celebrating that night. And so the Sahaba, they wanted to do the same thing as the Messenger وسلم, and he forbade them from doing that. So it's part of his own khasais, it's part of what's personal to him. And he gives us that on a silver plate. He just hands that over to us and says all of the barakah of Ramadan, all of the blessings and all of the, the virtues of Ramadan, all of the merits, all of the goodness that will come, all of the tanazzal al-mala'ika to wa ruhu fiha, all of that I'm gifting to the ummah. Wa hal jazawa ihsani hiya ihsan. That this is the gift that we receive. This is the gift that we receive. How do we respond to the gift? How do we respond to the gift of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What do we do with these nights, these precious, precious nights? What do we do with them? How do we spend them? How do we spend them? How do we show our gratitude for the gift? The great purpose of Ramadan is that which comes after Ramadan. And I mentioned it today in the khutbah, as many of you were not there, but the, the, we treat this month as though it was a honeymoon. This month is like a honeymoon. And we can, we, 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 we greet one another. We, we socialize with one another. We eat at one another's homes. We exchange greeting cards, Ramadan greeting cards. We're there standing in prayer together, laughing, smiling, embracing. And we can't, and we're, as, the, as the month goes by, we wonder why is it going by so fast? We want to hold on to it. We're celebrating this month. So we're on our honeymoon with this month. But what happens the day of Eid? The very day of Eid, we file for divorce. We file for divorce. And since we're initiating the divorce, we have to return the dowry. And that dowry is the Quran itself. The mahar. The mahar is the Quran itself. And so the Quran stays on the shelf. The very day of Eid, there's no more recitation of the Quran, there's no more juz, there's no more guilt that sets in the, in the heart when we miss our juz. There's no more tahajjud. We oversleep past fajr. And this is supposed to be a pillar of this religion. It's a pillar. Meaning that if we take this month seriously, this pillar, what is the pillar meant for? What use is a pillar if it is not built upon? What use is it having a pillar with no building that stands on top of it? So the question is, what are you and I going to build on the pillar of Ramadan? Because we're in it right now. We're putting, we're firmly establishing the pillar into the ground with every time that we stand before our Lord and with every fast we are placing this pillar firmly into the ground. Why? So that we can build upon it. And when we build, the pillar itself will withstand the weight of what we build. But if the pillar is not firmly established in the ground, anything can shake it. And then if the pillar is in the ground and we don't build anything on top of it, then any wind will make it collapse. So the purpose of Ramadan, the real blessing of Ramadan, is what we do with Ramadan after Ramadan. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had separation anxiety with Ramadan. 
Ramadan was not easy for the Prophet to just let go. He had separation anxiety with Ramadan. And perhaps that is why he fasted every Monday and Thursday after Ramadan. The six days of Shawwal he fasted. The, the three days after the bright nights he fasted. The ten days of Dhul Hijjah he fasted. The, 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 the ninth and tenth of Muharram he fasted. And almost all of Shaban he fasted. He fasted Shaban in preparation for Ramadan the way that you and I pray our sunnah before any fard. To exalt the month, to exalt the ab obligation. Whoever exalts the symbols of Allah, that is from the taqwa in the hearts. So let us exalt this great symbol. Let us remember the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the days. These are the days. Remind them about the days of Allah. These are the days of forgiveness. After the days of compassion and mercy. That after coming out of ten days of seeking the compassion of Allah and the mercy of Allah for ourselves, Allah follows that up with saying, You want my compassion? You want my mercy? You want, you, you want this for yourself? then you have to spend the next 10 days forgiving everyone who's ever done anything against you. Have we forgiven? We are in the days of forgiveness now. Whom have we forgiven and, whom have we, and, 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 and with whom have we held grudges? Against whom have we held grudges in these 10 months? If you want the compassion, if I want the compassion tonight, tomorrow, we call that person whom we haven't spoken to for years, whom we have wronged or who has wronged us. And we forgive them and we seek their forgiveness. That's what the month requires of us. Outside of this month, outside of this month, whoever fasts Mondays and Thursdays has their deeds presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, forgive them, forgive all of those who are fasting on these two days, except illa musha, except for the one who has beef with someone else except for the one who has a, a, a gripe with someone else, except for the one who has a chip on his shoulder with someone else, except for one who has cut off someone else. No, they are not forgiven. Even though you're fasting on those days as an intercession that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive your sins on the day that the, 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 the deeds are displayed before him, the forgiveness does not come down. If you have anything in your heart toward any other human being, and that is outside of Ramadan. What about the 10 days of forgiveness in Ramadan? In the very heart of Ramadan, the, very, the middle of Ramadan is the, is the 10 days of forgiveness. The 10 days of forgiveness. That is the day. That is where we are now. Forgiveness. Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-Rahmani. Ar-Rahamuhum man fil ard. Yarhamuhum man fil sama. Or yarhamuhum man fil sama. That those who show compassion, right? Those who show compassion shall be shown compassion by the Lord of compassion. Have compassion to all who are on earth, and the one, and the one who is who transcends his skies, his heavens, shall have compassion upon you. Have compassion toward all those who are in the earth. May the one who transcends his heavens have compassion on you. So these are the days that we are living. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala enable us to respond to the gift as as the gift deserves as the gift giver deserves. And Nabiyu awla bin mu'mineen min anfusihim. The Prophet is more entitled to the faithful than they are to their very own souls. And it is because he has given us everything. He has given us everything and he withheld nothing. He held nothing back for himself. He held nothing back for himself. He gave of himself entirely. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to hand over our souls to the doctor of those souls. Tibbun nufusi wa dawahi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The doctor of the souls and the medicine that the doctor prescribes. He is the doctor and he is the medicine that he prescribes. Ruhina wa fida. 
sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi May Allah accept your fasting and your prayers, inshaAllah. Bless you and your families. Preserve you all. Jazakum Allah khairan. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima. Wassalamu alaikum